Questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar. If you have a question, please use the chat box. I will read the questions aloud and John Collins will be happy to respond. You may submit questions at any time throughout this webinar, but they will not be addressed until the end. If we don't get to your question before the end of the webinar, we will be sure to follow up with you after the presentation. So just to check our system and make sure that everybody is hearing everything okay, if you could tap the, type the word yes into the chat box and click send, we would appreciate it. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So during this presentation, we're going to cover when applications will be accepted, how much it will cost to apply, the application itself, and how to apply. To take you back to our last briefing on December 21st, 2016, the Commonwealth is divided into six medical marijuana regions. For phase one, each of the six regions may have up to two grower processor permits for a total of 12 across the state. Within each medical marijuana region, counties have been identified for primary dispensary locations. For phase one, there will be up to 27 primary dispensaries across the Commonwealth. Each primary dispensary may operate up to two additional locations. Those additional dispensary locations may not be in the same county and must be in the same region as the primary dispensary. For instance, a primary dispensary may be located in Dauphin County, a second in Franklin, and a third in York County. Some important dates to remember throughout this process. Today, uh, by the close of business, approximately 3 to 4 p.m., applications will be available online. Starting today, applicants may begin preparing all of the necessary documents necessary for submittal. On February 20th, the Department of Health will be, begin accepting applications. We'll talk about the format and how they'll be tracked in a moment. On March 20th, the application period will close. The application review process will begin after March 20th. When an applicant is submitting their uh, entire application package, they're also submitting an application fee of $10,000 for a grower processor permit. That $10,000 initial application fee is non-refundable. They also will submit an initial permit fee of $200,000. That is refundable if the permit is not uh, issued. For a dispensary permit, there will be an initial application fee of $5,000. That is also non-refundable. There will be an initial permit fee of $30,000 per dispensary in the application. That $30,000 or uh, more potentially is refundable if the permit is not issued. Given that a dispensary application can list up to three locations, the initial permit fee can total up to $90,000. Although there is no limit to how many applications a person may submit, each submission must be accompanied by the correct fees. So let's take a look at the application. The application itself is made up of several parts. The first part will ask for the same basic information from all of the applicants, some of which you can see here. More detailed information, outlines and documents will be supplemented with the application. The completed application will describe how the facility will operate according to the parameters set out in Act 16 and the regulations. More detailed information, again, will be outlined in the entire application process. 
So where do you find the application? Anyone can view the application for grow processors and dispensaries on our website at www.health.pa.gov. On the home page, there's a link to the Pennsylvania Medical Marijuana Program. That page connects to the home page for the Pennsylvania Medical Marijuana Program. There are separate buttons for grower processors and dispensaries. Applications can be found by either selecting either the grower processor or the dispensary button. The application, the applicant will go ahead then and download the entire application. They're going to need to download the attachments and instructions as well. We are encouraging anyone applying for a permit to thoroughly review the instructions, Act 16, and the regulations. Current regulations are available in the Pennsylvania Bulletin. Once the application document and all attachments are complete, the applicant can finalize their package for submittal. Applicants are encouraged to review all of those documents to make sure that they're complete and that every required document is included because we will return incomplete applications. Application documents must be saved on electronic media like a USB drive or CD-ROM. Then they are mailed along with the required fees via the U.S. Postal Service. Applicants must verify the mailing date by enclosing a stamped U.S. Postal Service Form 3817 in the application process package. U.S. mail is the only way applications will be accepted. We are also accepting questions from applicants. Questions regarding the application process will be accepted by the department until February 8, 2017. All questions about the application process should be directed to the following email address, ra-dhq4app at pa.gov. The department will periodically publish answers to common application questions on the Medical Marijuana Program website. At this time, we're happy to take questions about the application processes and answer as many questions as we possibly can. Okay. We have a question from Scott Krause. Will a small number of permits limit uh, patient access? Why not allow patients to sign up first or concurrently? The, uh, this is uh, John Collins, by the way. The uh, location for the initial phase uh, was based on uh, a few metrics, one of those being uh, where the population is, where patients said they're going to be, and also where businesses said they would be applying for license licenses, I'm sorry, permits. Um, so it, it would not function to be able to sign up patients first and then uh, build the dispensaries if that's the question. And as a follow-up, Scott is asking, does the Department of Health expect uncertainty about the, tr the Trump administration and Jeff Sessions' medical marijuana, uh, marijuana policy to affect the level of interest? I uh, can't speak to that except to say that the um, charge of my department is to, is to impl implement the uh, regulation, um, and until that should change or, or does change, we'll continue to be implementing um, Act 16 as written. Thank you. Okay. The next question we have, are the costs similar to other states? from Ben Schmidt. I don't, I don't have, Ben, in front of me a comparison to other states. I, I am taking your question to me, are the permit and required fees similar to other states? Um, I'm sorry, I don't have that information in front of me at the moment. 
Chris would like to know, did the permit fees once include a grower processor did the permit fees once include a grower and processor to show proof of certain value of non-liquid assets in addition to the fees due? A, a full description of how the, in addition to the fees, what's required to submit an application uh, for a grower processor. I think that's what's spoken about. The uh, $2 million in, in capital requirements are, are, will be detailed and are detailed in the instructions that will be posted with the applications at the end of today. Dan would like to know, when do you anticipate the first permit to be granted? Additionally, at what point will the applications be made public for review and principles involved be identified? I think there are three questions there. So, um, April, I'm going to take them apart one at a time and let me know if I missed anything. Uh, wh when do I expect to make a final determination on applications? Is, is that the question? When do we anticipate the first applications to be granted? All right. At the last event of December 21st, um, the same type of question was asked and the response today is, is still the same and that is we're anticipating at least 90 days to review the initial um, submittals that we received. And you'd also like to know what point will the applications be made public for review? Yeah, I, don't, I don't have an answer for that. Um, we of course will make publicly available the uh, permittees. Um, granted, um, but I, I don't have an answer regarding are the submittals available for disclosure. Michael Spivak would like to know, are we allowed to sell edibles? The, the, uh, the short answer is no. Um, the Act 16 does not provide for either um, a leaf format or dry leaf format or edibles. Ben would like to um, also ask, are we still, still anticipating 900 applicants? Uh, ben, yes. We're, we're still anticipating um, up to 900 applicants. And Scott Krause would like to follow up. Can a dispensary licensee put a second location in a county that has its own dispensary permit allocation? And who asked the question? What did you say? Scott Krause. Oh, um, Scott, uh, John Collins here, of course. Uh, let me just walk through that. I think, um, April, you, you uh, touched on that briefly, and, and that is um, the primary location needs to be where we have designated it. The, the other two need to be in separate counties within the same region, and, and I'm taking your question to mean uh, will there be competition within those additional regions, meaning can another primary um, permit holder also open up in the, in the regions that um, April used uh, to illustrate. And the answer to that is yes. Another question, will a scoring rubric be made public along with the applications today? The, the, the scoring rubric are part of the um, instructions and will be visible today, yes. Okay. Uh, and then Dan has a question. Can, can Tinctures. Tinctures are considered separate from edibles, correct? Yes. Additionally, cannabis oils that can be vaporized are allowed in dispensaries. Is that correct? Uh, Dan, you're, you're correct. Uh, tinctures being a, a solution of uh, medical marijuana, it's, it's not an edible, typically used, as I understand it, for uh, vaporization or nebulation. Uh, you're asking also, can you reread that for me? Cannabis oils that can be vaporized are allowed in dispensaries, is that correct? Uh, cannabis oils are uh, allowed in the dispensary, correct. Are you still on schedule to be uh, up and running for mid-2018? Yes, we are. Okay. That takes us to the end of the questions. Are there any additional questions that anyone would like to ask? We have a question from Lene. When will phase two open? Uh, we haven't made that determination, Renee, at this point. And uh, Ben would like to know, do you anticipate ever allowing a leaf form or edibles? Uh, uh, ben, I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I, I don't have any feedback for you there. I can only tell you in the current um, statute it, it's not provided for. So uh, Michael also asked, can a, a grower sell dry leaf to other growers wholesale? Uh, dry leaf is not permitted um, in the Act, so the answer is no. 
if you're also asking me, can a grower processor sell to another grower processor uh, the approved form of medical marijuana in the Commonwealth, the, the answer is yes. But they cannot sell any form of medical marijuana not accounted for or approved in the statute. How long till patients can register to receive medical marijuana? Uh, we, we haven't communicated that date yet, but of course it'll need to be in advance of when we anticipate uh, medical marijuana being um, available. Is there any advantage for someone to submit an application earlier? No. Okay. And then uh, as far as, Ben, your question about the additions to the safe harbor list, the safe harbor list is now at Around 150. It's 155 actually today. Good. As of this morning, I double checked before we jumped on this uh, webinar. Okay. Any additional questions from any of our any of our attendees? The period is described as phase one. Will there definitely be a phase two? Uh, well, I guess the correct answer is I'll, I'll know that when we're ready to implement phase two. Okay. So in other words, what, what John is saying is that we need to see how the effectiveness of phase one before we go ahead and move ahead for phase two. Will the department be considering support letters from elected officials as part of the application process? Within the application itself, there are two designated areas um, where it's clearly stated that uh, those letters uh, will not be considered. As far as the, Ben would like to know um, on the process from our end, do we find it, do you think that we'll find it um, cumbersome as far as reviewing the application? Uh, ben, thanks for the question, uh, no, not at all. Okay. And what if there are enough qualified, I'm guessing, Dan, your question is, what if there are not enough qualified applicants now? Then, Dan, under a scenario where we don't have enough qualified applicants, uh, that's why our, our language is up to, um, up to two, up to 12 total, um, up to 27 dispensaries, uh, because we don't, we don't know what we don't have yet, but we're assuming that we will have um, qualified applicants. But in a case where we don't, we of course won't be uh, able to uh, issue those permits. We have a question from Chris, several municipalities in Bucks County have implemented zoning ordinances anticipating Act 16. Will towns that have already zoned have any impact on the application decisions? Having one of the things required as part of the um, applicant submittal is being able to indicate that they have the ability to use the land or location as described in the Act. So if the question is, will we be able to um, deem a facility operational uh, without having zoning permit to do so, uh, no. Is that required to occur if that's also the question as part of the submittal? Uh, no, but just for additional clarity, once a permit is issued, the permittee has six months from the issue date to become operational. Okay. Um, there is a question of how will the non-refundable funds be spent for the permit application? Funds that aren't returned will go into the identified funds as laid out in the Act. That's all the specificity I have for you. Okay. And just to clarify, Dan wanted to clarify that um, Director Collins just said that letters from politicians that various applicants are soliciting will not be considered in any way. Is that correct? Uh, Dan, you are correct. Okay. Lene would like to know, um, are applications open for laboratories as well, and does the department know how many lab permits it plans to issue? Uh, applications for laboratories are, are not available at this time. One other point of clarification, there really is not a, a limit on the number of uh, laboratories that can be approved. All right, uh, that looks like all the questions that I'm seeing. I will give one more shout out for additional questions. Uh, 
Okay. Um, we've been asked if we are um, aware of a medical marijuana conference in Pittsburgh scheduled for April 21st to 22nd. DA, DOH is listed as a participant. Um, DOH was invited, but we are not a participant in that conference. Dan yeah, would like to know when will the documents be posted and when will you send them to the, to the participants before posting? Uh, April, why don't you speak to our anticipated timeline for today as to when the applications are, are scheduled for release? So the applications will be available online today. We will begin to accept applications on February 20th. The application process will close on March 20th. So we need that time to accept all of those applications before any list could be generated. Today's presentation will be available for download. Um, and um, Scott Krauss just wants us to clarify that if uh, I win a Lehigh County designated permit, I could put a second location in Northampton County, which has its own primary designation. Um, that is correct, Scott. So as long as if we go back, and I can take you back to um, that slide just to show you, as long as um, we have, as long as it's within the region that the primary permit was designated. So in this um, in this example, we're using Region Three South Central. There are four primary dispensary permits. If I back up just a little bit more, I can show you that within this region. We do have a primary dispensary permit for York County, but if I have a primary dispensary permit in Dauphin County, I can put a second location in York County as well. Okay, well thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it. If you have additional questions, please feel free to email me at a Hutchison. that's H-U-T, C-H-E-S-O-N at PA.gov. We'll be happy to follow up with you. You can also contact the Department of Health Press Office at 717-787-1783. If you're listening to this uh, recording after the live presentation and have questions and are a permittee, please refer to the email address that we uh, referenced earlier in the presentation. Thank you so much and we appreciate your time.